Hello, I'm Scott Mansfield, uh, talking today about the object layer options in InDesign and what's so great about them. That's what I'm talking about. And if we look at this folder here, we see we've got our InDesign file and a links folder. And the links folder shows an Illustrator file and a Photoshop file. These are native files for Illustrator and Photoshop, respectively. And we're going to look at a particular function within InDesign that may assist people in setting up specifically interactive PDFs and setting up mockups, uh, essentially storyboarding the way in which an interface is to behave. So what I want to do is show you around this file and uh, point out that we've got um, three, four pages of radically different appearing um, uh, radically different appearing uh, smartphone app mockup. Under the window menu, if we go to links or click over here on links, we can see that what's going on here is that we have an Illustrator file, the same title, Booksite AI, and smartphone PSD. Those are the only two files that are linked to this file, and yet each page looks different, sometimes subtly, sometimes ra radically different. And so what we want to do is take a look at why we would use this technique um, and obtain these results. This is, um, currently it's in uh, typical display settings. I'm going to bump this up to high quality display, knowing that that'll probably slow down my computer a little bit, but it'll at least make these things look a less, less aliased. All right. So, too close. Let's go to the Pages panel. You can see our pages. Each of these has a placed file in the same location of the same in this case, Photoshop document. What I want to point out is that under the object menu is something called object layer options. And what's interesting about this is that we see um, a reproduction of what we see in Photoshop. That is, we see a layers panel and we get to control the visibility using these eyeballs here of items or layers, or in this case, groups in the Photoshop file. I'm going to turn on preview so we can see the results of if I were to turn this visibility on, I see a radically different looking presentation. And this is being pulled from that group of layers in Photoshop. So let's go to Photoshop and take a look at that too. So here we are in Photoshop, we see corresponding number of layers. So what use value this has for you in creating um, interface designs is that you're able to quickly go back and forth between the mock-up and process and InDesign and if you spot a problem or an adjustment to be made in the uh, original Photoshop file that you've chosen to you've chosen to work in Photoshop then you can go in and edit if there's a typo raccoon is misspelled or what have you one could go in and, and fix that so that it says Awesome, which of course is inaccurate. If I um, then um, save this file, and it's linked right now, if I go back to InDesign, I find out that my links palette will tell me that there's something alarming going on here that um, it needs to be updated, essentially. Because I changed the file that it was linked to, I have an alarm here, so I can remedy that by uh, going to the panel menu and update all links or update that link. I'll just update all links. Raccoon is what it says now. While it's updating, I get the rainbow wheel, the alarm goes away, and now the word is possum. And of course I should probably change that back since it's not true of that image. So each of these pages has been um, controlled for its object layer options, controlled to show those layers that need to be seen, or those groups that need to be seen at that sequence that's being depicted in this mockup. In, in Photoshop, we also have something called layer comps, and I'm going to explain it as much as is necessary for its use in the context that we are 
uh, using it here. And um, I'm going to skip some things that I'm not going to pretend to cover everything having to do with layer comps. But I want to point out that if we um, have gone through our layers panel and we've made subtle choices, sometimes they're effects, and these are within the group uh, called main page here. So I've gone in and I've made subtle choices. Every time I make a choice in terms of the visibility of um, layers or uh, groups, um, that is really labor. It's attention and, our, and time. And so Photoshop has offers a way to s save that labor in the form of something called a layer comp. At least that's how we're going to use it. I don't want to make too many giant blanket statements. Essentially what this means is if I go to the layer comps panel menu and make a new layer comp from this, I can give it a name. It's controlling, in this case, we're just controlling visibility. We're storing which of these layers and uh, groups or items within a group, which of their visibility has been turned off or on. There's a lot to keep track of as your file progresses in complexity. So that's what this is for. So I would just call this uh, one, or I could call it home page, you know, something having to do with that stage of interaction. And I probably should give it a number so that it's within a sequence. And all of this is imaginary at this point, but I'll hit OK. And now 12 home pages listed there. So moving on. I'll uh, collapse that and uh, choose a different layer. And this is the alarm group, rather. And uh, I can change some things here. Change that. How about this? All right. And I go to the Layer Comps panel, and I say New Layer Comps, and I'll call this 13 uh, Home. And I hit OK. Notice that if I click on the icon here, um, I'm immediately changing all of the visibility settings. Um, they're being recalled, whichever eyeballs were turned off or on, for whichever layer or sublayer. I'm sorry, group or layer. So these are uh, layer comps, and we could, as we progress through our mock-up, we can um, name them, rename them, delete them resequence them so one is in front of the other. All of these things can be done as we're working in Photoshop. And then when we're ready to lay it out in InDesign and set up um, interactivity with bookmarking or um, buttons and hotspots or whatever you want to call it, uh, interactivity within InDesign in order to output an interactive PDF, we have all of these um, elements that we need set up and organized, layer, uh, labeled, inte labeled intelligently so that we're able to recall, either we or our team members are able to recall their meaning. And then uh, what's interesting about this is if I say, um, if I save this right now, and remember this is still linked up with my InDesign file we were looking at a moment ago, I hit save, I should once again see an alarm showing up in my links panel because I have change the original. So I'll once again update the links. Now what I'd like to do is go to um, one of those pages. How about page one, the one I'm on here, and I will choose uh, this um, instance, I'll call it, of this uh, linked file. And I can go to the object menu and go to object layer options, or perhaps faster would be go to, to right click or control click on a Mac and go to object layer options. And what's interesting and what I want to point out is that we've got layers up here, but notice we also have layer comps. Layer comp is available here. And since I saved uh, a couple, they should be available to me now in InDesign since it's the same, again, linked file. So if I click on this layer comp, uh, I guess I shouldn't cover this up so that I could actually um, see it. Let's try that again. So preview is turned on. That's an important thing to remember. Preview is turned on, and now as I choose a layer comp, not terribly uh, gratifying. How about this one? There we go. So the layer comps are still retrievable. We can call them out in InDesign as we progress. So we don't have a, a sort of a commitment that we're making as we move from Photoshop into 
in design, we, we aren't just leaving the Photoshop document behind. We can easily go back in and edit those things that are problematic. Um, and so that makes me uh, think that perhaps we should move on to, of course, another um, program that's often used for mocking up interfaces, and that is uh, Illustrator. So here we are in Illustrator, and we have a very similar configuration where we're um, dealing with uh, intelligent separation of elements into separate layers. Um, the background layer would be perhaps all the things that are constant and are unchanging from page to page of the website in this case. There might be a layer that's in front that uh, is positioned in front of all items that might be changing behind it, but this is simple enough. And so we have a layer, and then Illustrator has sub-layers within each layer. And as I click on Home, we see an element, uh, elements that have to do with the home page, and then we've got a um, author layer. And then we've got a tour layer. Okay, so um, moving on into InDesign as we look at these, as you might imagine, if we go to the Object menu and go to Object Layer Options, I should select one of these first, of course, Object, Object Layer Options, or right-click on it once again. And notice that we have access to the control over the visibility of each of these layers. In the placed native file, Illustrator file that we placed into InDesign. So the upside of using Illustrator is that you're dealing with largely vector based objects, aside from those placed raster based images. Presumably it would make InDesign function faster because it's vector based less information. Um, the downside is, as you can see, that we can't go in and get that fine detail of control over the visibility of those items within a layer. So that's a pretty big downside, I think, uh, unless you are planning things accordingly and duplicating each of these layers with different visibility within it in Illustrator. Uh, regardless, it still gives you a great deal more flexibility uh, than if you were outputting perhaps a series of Illustrator files, not using object layer options, or outputting uh, some raster-based file and placing them into InDesign, and fixing problems by simply replacing JPEGs. Well, this doesn't require that. We can go back into the Illustrator file, as you might suspect, make a change, uh, and um, as soon as we do so and save an item, we would see, once again, in InDesign, a problem with the link. The link would give us an alarm. So I'll put in some gibberish here and hit Save. And in InDesign, in my Links panel, I see that the book site file is getting an alarm because, as you know, I just um, updated the link. I saved a link, changed it outside of InDesign, so I'll update all the links, and now if I were to explore that page, I would find that